I give thanks to you with all my heart, Lord. I sing your praise before all other gods. I bow be holy temple and thank your name for your loyal love and faithfulness because you have made your name and word greater than everything else. On the day I cried out, you answered me. You encouraged me with an inner strength. Let them sing unto the Lord's ways, because the Lord's glory is so great. Even though the Lord is high, he still sees the lowly, but God keeps his distance from the arrogant. Whenever I am in deep trouble, you make me live again. You send your power against my enemy's wrath. You save me with your strong hand. The Lord will do all this for my sake. Your faithful love lasts forever, Lord. Don't let us go of what your hand hath made. Amen. And we will do our invocation together. We come into your presence with praise on our lips and love in our hearts for you, O Lord our God. Please accept our songs of praise as sweet offerings to you for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Hear our songs and purify our hearts. Help us to hear your call in our lives. And even as we hear, to respond with faith and commitment. Guide us to love you more deeply. Lead us to love one another more and help us to love others with the kind of love you have shown toward us. We praise you and give you our love. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And our prayer of confession that we will say together, God of tender mercies, we admit that sometimes we don't know what to do with ourselves. We anger at the slightest insult and imagine great vengeance upon those who have wronged us. We laze about in our good news of our faith and do not consider the deep commitment of faith. We care for ourselves, but not for others. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us. Help us to repent and make us whole. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. Feel like shouting, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden 
will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will, pray, I will sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and for your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called you, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing the ways of the Lord to the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes, and your right hand you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Thanks for the wisdom of these words and their understanding. Our reading from the New Testament comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 11. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you were saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you, for as it was first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and after that he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers and sisters at the same time most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. <laughs> For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I by the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preached. And this is what you believed. Here ends the reading of God's word. I am going to take a little bit of liberty, even though our lectionary is going to always be the same as what it it is um, for the lectionary of this year. I am going to, for the next four weeks, talk about a particular subject. And I know you probably all know this subject very well. And there's a book that I've been reading by a, a marvelous author. And it's called Life is Messy. <laughs> Couldn't put it any clearer or any more direct, but it's by Matthew Kelly. And he's one of the best New York Times bestsellers. He's Catholic and does a lot of seminars all over the world and has written probably about 12 or more books. He also speaks for corporations and what are and different organizations and religious groups all over, and especially to the church. And he has written this with an emphasis of Christendom in it, uh, with that emphasis, to kind of understand how life can be so messy. And it comes out of his own personal experience. As a famous writer, as anyone famous or anybody that has any kind of clout, you know that at some point, you're not always going to sit best with everybody. <laughs> you're going to have your promoters and those that just love and adore you, and then you have those that aren't so keen on who you are. And he went through about two or three years of a real terrible depression. A time in his life where I'm sure he thought, I'm not going to make it. I don't know how I can get through this. Life is just too messy. It is unbearable. At this time, he found himself in a place where he just realized, I can't even write. And something that he was so good at doing, I mean, writing to him was like breathing. And he couldn't do it. So what he did was he started a journal. And maybe this is something, and I've done journals myself, so I know how valuable that they can be. But he began to realize that maybe he could think in fragments or small phrases or small themes. And he would begin to write daily or every other day, whatever, whenever it prompted him to do so, a thought on a particular subject. Well, that's how this book works. There are no chapters in it. <laughs> It goes by theme to theme to theme. Thank goodness it's in somewhat of a progression of really a very difficult state of mind and emotions to you can see his growth and his healing as he works through the mess in his life. And I'm going to take not all of these themes in here, but combining them somewhat. Um, over the next four weeks. And I think sometimes we do the lectionary, but it may not be meeting always the needs that are at hand. And I think in this day and age, and what we have gone through as a people, community and church and nation and humans, I think sometimes we need to refocus and look at and see how God can meet our needs where we are. And so the first one is kind of entitled, <laughs> and we ask ourselves this all the time, what did I do wrong to deserve this? What did I do wrong? 
And I'm sure we have all asked ourselves that question at some point in time. That's not unusual, and even Matthew Kelly found himself asking that question. What in the world did I do wrong? You know, it kind of reminds me of a movie that I saw. Do you remember Jack Nicholson? He played in a movie called As Good As It Gets. <laughs> I love this movie because it so speaks of life and the fragments of life and how bizarre life can be. And of course, he had an obsessive compulsive disorder and he always had to attend to everything right at that moment and it had to be on his schedule and whatever. And he had a moment where he exploded and he didn't understand what was going on and he walks into his psychiatrist's office and he bangs on the door and of course he's in session with somebody else but the psychiatrist opens the door and says, how can I help you? And he says, I need to see you right now. I need a schedule right now. And of course, the psychiatrist says, no, we are not going to do that today. You need to control where you are, put this on the shelf, and come at your scheduled meeting time. He couldn't believe it. Jack Nicholson walks out of that office, can't believe the doctor refused to see him, and he looks around and he sees all the people in the waiting room waiting to get in to see him. And he said, did you ever think that this might be as good as it gets? And it's true. Life is filled with continual disappointments, the unexpected, the things we didn't count on. And maybe we haven't said it exactly in those words. But we have all asked ourselves, how did I get here? What in the world prompted this? What did I do? I know every morning we used to pick up the paper. Now we go on our computers and we look at the news. But every time you do, you see a story or you hear of an event and you think, how did that happen? Why did that happen? It happened to them? They're my neighbors. How did this happen? I can't believe this could be. And we constantly scratch our heads and we wonder, is it something we could have done differently? And of course, the first person we always blame is ourselves. I don't know, maybe you don't do that, but I'm the type of person that thinks, what did I do? Could I have prevented this? Did I make a mistake? Could I have done more? Could I have done little? And sometimes, really, when it comes right down to it, Sometimes, no matter what you think you could have done, it wouldn't have changed a thing. And on the larger scale, when it comes to world issues and that, I find I have less involvement in those kind of issues around the world. My heart goes out. I feel for people around the world, but I don't always feel like what I could have done would have made a difference. Maybe in my community, maybe in my neighborhood, maybe in my family, maybe in my church, that might be a little different, but even there, sometimes we are limited in what we can do to change the outcome. I think one of life's enduring mysteries is that we don't have to do anything for things to go wrong. <laughs> I don't know, maybe our egos are so big we think we're always the center of everything. <laughs> and we think somehow we control it all. <laughs> I have learned over the years, tw 69 years, that I control very little. <laughs> 
And I'm finding out the more that I think about it, I only control my own space. <laughs> <laughs> that's around me and what I do and what I say and really there's not a whole lot I can do for the choices of everybody else. Now I'm not going to say that we don't influence some of those choices. Oh yeah, we do. We do. But we also have to come to realize that sometimes we can only do our part from where we stand or where we sit. And then others have to make their choices as well. When I think of the world, I think of there are earthquakes that happen every day. There are even volcanoes that have erupted under the ocean floor. There are tsunamis that come. There are viruses that come and mutate and mutate and mutate. And I realize I don't have a whole lot of control over those things in life. And I think Matthew Kelly, and I'm going to quote from his book from time to time because he says it so much better than I could ever do. He said, life didn't turn out the way I expected. In some ways, it has exceeded my expectations. and other ways, it has disappointed me. Never in my wildest dreams as a child could I have imagined that I would have lived the life I have. Hmm. The adventures, the experiences, the opportunities, the love I have given, and also the love I have received. And the successes that I have enjoyed far exceed my expectations. But I also never imagined in my worst nightmare the dark side of these bright lights would also happen to me. And I think each one of us can say that. I remember when I was young and planning my life and thinking what I wanted to do. You know, at first what I wanted to do because I loved to paint and draw and I was an artist and I used to teach all the grades in elementary school art classes. The teachers would come and get me and I would do that. So I always saw it. Well, I was born on Cape Cod. I would sit at the very end and I would paint all day. <laughs> I don't know how I thought I would make money, but I would paint all day and I guess sell what I did. And you know, when I think of that, I paint from time to time, but that hasn't been where I ended up. That wasn't my calling in life. And as a child, I remember in Sunday school learning this particular scripture. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I remember learning that at a very young age. And I have not forgotten that scripture. And there are many times, just like Matthew Kelly, I have said to myself, how did I get here? What is the purpose in this? I didn't ask for this. And all of a sudden, I realized this scripture that if I just trust in God, if I don't lean into my own understandings, but lean on God's understanding of all of it, that somehow, even through this, God will direct my path. I have held to that, and there have been some very difficult moments, I'm sure in your life as well, but I have continued to trust in God. Or often there are limits in where we put our trust and who we give that to. <laughs> and I've learned that in life as well. I don't know that I would have my oil mechanic babysit my children. I don't know if certain people in life are good at other things. I know when I go to 
interview with a doctor and I'm changing doctors or whatever, I always ask them, do you have a great understanding of cancer? Do you understand certain genetic diseases? Because those were in my family. And if they don't, I choose someone else. So there are people that build our confidence and we trust in. But one good thing about the Proverbs scripture is, it is a promise that we can always, without doubt and hesitation, trust in God. We may not know what lies ahead or what God wants for us, but through the events that come our way and the decisions that need to be made and the choices that we make because of the circumstances we are in, God will lead us and we will find a new path or a path that brings praise and honor to him and also to ourselves. I hope that in the next few weeks, as we look how life can be so messy, somehow how we can pull, and I love this because it looks like a bunch of spaghetti up there. <laughs> and if you know, my husband's Italian and there is nothing more uh, messy than eating spaghetti at a table, especially 12 people round. I mean, you're always going to get squirted somewhere as you twirl the spaghetti. And my thought is there is a way that we can gather that spaghetti of life and twirl it for our benefit. And we can pull these strings together for the purpose of God. Amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer today, I know there are many needs on your heart. I know we're praying for Linda today, and there are others that are listed in your bulletin. Please remember them in prayer as well. And as we begin our prayer together, let's take a moment of silent prayer. And you speak to God about the issues, the concerns that are on your heart today. And then we will pray together. Let us pray. God, how grateful we are for your undying love. We're so glad that we can trust you when everything else around us may fall apart. We can put our trust in you. You are faithful. You love us. You care about each one of us. And you want us to be whole. As we bring our concerns and our needs to you, may you answer them according to your will and purpose in our lives. And may we find hope as we give our concerns and our cares at the foot of the cross to you today knowing that you will minister to each one that is in need and provide answers and guidance and a path. And as you just taught your disciples to pray, we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We also thank you for our offering and for the gifts that have been given this day. We ask your blessing on all that are here. And may we go in your peace and with your direction 
to serve the world. Amen. Which makes us what we are.